Mark, let's start the clock then and think about uh, the markets. We have three minutes to do so. We're looking ahead to US CPI. That's got to be our headline conversation, I suppose. Is this going to tell you whether we get a 50 basis point hike in March? Is that what's at stake today? That's where everyone's looking at it. But I think it's going to be hard to make that decision tomorrow. You tell me the reading now. You tell me if it's 7% or 7.5%. The consensus expectation is 7.2%, to be clear. And I would not be able to tell you whether we get 50 basis points. I think we still will probably go into that way with a hawkish bent um, because the backdrop of a building economy in the US, the building inflation pressures, whatever we get on inflation today, the fact is commodities continue to nudge higher and we continue to get those inflationary signals. However, short term, it is certainly being hyped up as a signal for March. OK, and what are you seeing in the broader commodity space? You talked about this when we looked at the GMM, about strengthened commodities, uh, about agriculture, about metals, but not about energy, uh, and, and makes us ask questions about whether we're seeing a bit of divergence there. We definitely see a bit of divergence. Is it sustainable? Probably not longer term. Uh, you find generally the overall commodity sphere tends to move and some of the macro issues, i.e. dollar issues, yield, inflation, um, the global growth outlook. But they can diverge in the short term because they have very, very different micro fundamentals. What is interesting is food prices continue to surge. And I think this is really, really squeezing the consumer. As you know, it is one of my big concerns for 2022. I think the most similar environment we had was going into the Arab Spring, coming out of a deep recession post the great financial crisis, um, inequality in terms of the recovery from that recession and the fact that we had food prices surging and high energy prices. We have all those uh, elements again today and I think in certain countries that is an issue. Turkey is on my radar of where there does seem to be increasing tensions around the rising costs and those inflationary pressures and so I'm watching that around the world especially with the trucker protests particularly in Canada. So we are mm. seeing in commodities food prices continue to surge, energy prices just pausing though not pulling back. Yeah, Ford flagging that those protests in Canada now causing disruption to some of their operations. Another supply chain headache for a, a sector, that sector in particular, that maybe doesn't need those. Um, let me ask you about FX markets. We don't talk about Latin American markets very much on this programme for time, uh, time zone reasons, I suppose, Mark. Uh, today we are waiting for CPI, and as we are waiting and things seem fairly quiet, good time to reflect on some strength that we've seen actually in emerging market FX, certainly in LATAM. What, what's the story there for you? In incredible gains we're seeing. Brazilian real, obviously the most important uh, economy in South America by size, is completely leading this. About 8% returns year to date, um, and we're only in the second week of February against the US dollar. Part of that is obviously the yield return. And they are massively ahead of the hiking cycle, and I think that's the point. I think this might be a good year for the Brazilian real. It's very, very discounted after a number of years of underperformance. Everyone knows the political risk. It is priced in. Now they have very, very high real yields in a world of negative real yields. They're ahead in the hiking cycle. I think that overall the Brazilian Real can continue to lead in a world of higher yields. OK, a conversation we then should return to. Remember, you can get up-to-date analysis and insight from Mark and the rest of the Markets Live team. MLIV Go, that is the function to use on your terminal.